Thank you so much for coming. My name is Sean, and this is my first ever time doing an event like this, so apologies if it's rubbish, but I hope it's really good. <laughs> um, I've not been working in the industry very long at all, so I thought it'd be worth just introing myself a little bit. So uh, I've been working in research, research operations now for about four years, so and roughly half of that has been in lockdown. Um, so I'm very used to this hybrid way of working and not so used to these in-person events. Uh, not used to that at all. Uh, but before Zoopla, I worked at Deliveroo, and no, not as a delivery rider, as many of my parents' uh, friends like to joke. I, I worked in research operations there as well, and have really learned to hone my craft, and similar to what I'm going to be talking about today, with working with B2B, uh, with estate agents, got to work with a lot of restaurant owners, kitchen staff, um, riders, really exciting, really fun bunch of people to work with, incredibly hard to get a hold of, but really interesting people. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super passionate about helping people doing work, do research. As a research operations individual, uh, I, I find nothing more enjoyable than someone coming to me with a question which they think they can't answer, and then helping them answer it with really strong user research. I really love that. And then outside of work, I'm a huge football and Arsenal fan. Thank you. All right, I've got, so I've got you on my side. That's good. Um, I, I'm big. <laughs> now you can you can get out. Whoever that was. Uh, I love playing video games and just finding the best places to eat in London and what beautiful view. So if anyone's got any recommendations, I will happily take some on board. Um, before jumping into the actual development of it, I thought some background details and the difference between uh, what we're talking about today. So obviously there's a brand that you put you love and hopefully love and you know very well. It's where our estate agent partners come to advertise their properties, their services, and a variety of other things, as well as for us to go and procrastinate and live our millionaire lifestyles. And just I do that a lot, <laughs> but it's, it's for testing. It's for testing reasons. Um, and as a research operations person at Zoopla, I spit my time 50-50 on the Zoopla side and the Alto side, which I've been impressed with many people who've heard of Alto. It's our flagship CRM tool for estate agents. So it's a variety of things. Uh, it can do property management, looking after the renting, selling process, a lot of things behind the scenes that we get very frustrated at when we are trying to move house. But it's our flagship products, and uh, it's, yeah, it's where we do a lot of our B2B research. And that's basically what I'm going to be talking about today is this side of the business. So what are we trying to solve? So the whole point of this talk is about how I went about building this B2B panel. So with, and I'm hoping a lot of you can appreciate the difficulties with B2B research, it's sometimes so hard to get hold of your uh, custom, base, custom base to talk to. Even though we know where they all are in Alto, we still were really struggling to get hold of them. So here are some of the problems we were facing. Just like I just said, we we're really struggling to source our customers for research. So even our their teams, the customer facing teams, going through them, asking for support, just couldn't get the right sort of people we wanted to talk to. And even for our own resources, we just weren't having much success. Really tiny sample sizes. Well, when we, when we first joined, we'd found that lots of research were based on talking to maybe two to three people. Huge product that you can't, you can't base assumptions on that sort of size. So we really needed to increase that. And not only was we having problems with the small sample sizes, the actual difficulty in recruiting the right customer profiles. We didn't have the right data in-house. So when we actually were successful in recruiting, we were talking to the wrong person sometimes, and that was so frustrating, not only for us, but for them as well, because they're extremely busy people. And the current methods we were using were quite hacking and time consuming. We came into quite a fresh user research uh, driven business. And some of the methods we were do using to not only do the research, but also go about recruiting people were very scrappy. So we needed to review that and see how we could build upon it. And the uh, existing sort of research that was happening, we were heavily relying on previous customers and lists of just names of like, yeah, they, they sound cool. You can sign, you can, you can message them. Or these uh, customers who have signed up or have done research in the past and said, yeah, happy to be contacted. The problem with that, though, and I, I love a really keen participant, is that you end up basing your entire product on two to three really keen users. So you're not ever thinking about those uh, external cases. So yeah, we needed to get over this. Plus, with these lists of names just living throughout the business, it just weren't GDPR friendly whatsoever. We really needed to centralize that. And this all resulted in just not being able to perform regular research cycles. We were stuck in a very stop-start motion on the B2B side. 
and myself and my B2B researcher, Rose, just really struggled to really get started. So we needed to solve this initial problem with actually the sourcing, the recruitment, before we could go ahead and actually start doing this regular research cycle. So there's no surprise that we decided to build a panel, and that's what I'm here to talk about the phases that we went through today. So I got this analogy throughout of sort of how uh, building a house, Zoopla houses. I'm, I'm hoping you've got. I'm hoping you got that. Um, and I could I could really talk for hours about how we went about developing this panel and building it, and it took a long time. But I'm sure you guys don't want me to do that. So I'm going to try and keep it to just the four phases here. So when you're building your house, if anyone has ever built their house, I'd be really interested to talk to you about that as well. You've got to prepare the site and you've got to set the foundations. And in terms of for the panel, this is all about asking sort of three big questions. And one of them was, what's the goal? So obviously we have that goal of wanting to solve those problems, do regular research. But what are the knock-on effects of that? And we considered that actually we could get so much more out of this than just doing regular research. We were really keen to build a really good customer closeness program. We had, from research or just from conversations with state agents, felt that they weren't really hearing a lot from Zoopla or was a bit confusing what the relationship was between Auto and Zoopla, the brand. So this is a great opportunity to not only build that panel of users, but also build a relationship with those users. Do a bit of to and fro. You're, you're helping us with research. We're going to help you find out a bit more what's going on. Uh, who? Accountability. Who's going to be involved? And we didn't want it to be a case of, let's keep this quiet, let's keep this just with us so we can make the decisions. We really did want to involve everyone in who we could think about. So obviously your go-to legal and finance team, bringing them on the journey, making sure we have terms and conditions set up, whoever we're going to go for for our software provider, spoilers, um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that it was all set up and they were on our side. As well as marketing, um, product, design, the customer-facing teams, whether they were going to be right involved in the project in terms of the planning, execution, or just on a good to know basis, like, okay, I can see that's coming from the future, good for me to know. As well as who's going to be responsible for its upkeep. And there's no surprise that that fell on myself in the research operations team. So that was really easy, that was a quick, but for if you're going away trying to do this, do ask that question early on. There's nothing worse than getting to an end of a project and then asking, okay, who's going to be looking after this? <laughs> you want to make sure you establish that. And then the final question, which I actually think is the most important, what don't we want this panel to be? And before this sort of blew up and became something that we didn't want it to be, we needed to ask that question of, okay, what don't we want this to be? And crucially, we didn't want this to be sort of an admin support line for our customers. We've got loads of avenues where they can get in touch with customer-facing teams if there's a problem with the software or something else. We didn't want to build this and then be another sort of admin going to support with customer queries. We really wanted to establish this as just research focus. So phase one, we have the site and the foundation set now. We're asking these big questions. Obviously, there's loads of other questions, but I recommend that these are the three big ones we have to really get over. So phase two, now it's time to actually build that structure and the roof of the house. Bear with me on this. Uh, and as part of that, the structure in this case is very much the software. We aren't a big enough business to go away and try and build some tool internally that was going to host this. We knew we'd have to rely on an external source. So obviously, outside of those obvious things like wanting it to be easy to use, strong GDPR measures, um, there was a few key things that we were really looking for. One of them being, we don't need it to do everything, just the things that we need really well. So in this case, panel management, nice little tools within that panel. How do we, measure, how do we look after people? How do we onboard people? Things that are just really straightforward. And again, there's no surprises that Question Pro provided that. Um, in, in, in abundance as well, as I'll get on to later. But also, we have a lot of tools internally as well. So we have like usertesting.com, Get Feedback, Pendo, loads of these tools that we didn't need something else that does that or overlapping. So we just needed something that did what we needed. And that was panel management really well. In platform analysis and reporting, we hate taking data from one thing, downloading it to make it pretty elsewhere. So being able to have a piece of software that can create and, uh, some reports or download that data was really, really like a key thing we wanted. I hate, as just being very GDPR-minded, I hate taking data from one place and putting it elsewhere. It stresses me out. I don't like it. <laughs> I want it all to stay in one place. Mobile experience, and this relates back to our estate agent group. We wanted to make sure that wherever they were, however they were moving around, and if they had quick five minutes maybe before a call, 
that they could just quickly log on, take part in a quick research study, or just a little bit of engagement. Something that's just really easy for them, no barriers, in sense of control, similar to the platform analysis, just keeping it in the platform. Don't want to have to be emailing or having to buy loads of vouchers elsewhere. Nice and tight inside the platform. And external support in the beginning. Um, I mentioned that we were, we are a small team, as myself and two researchers, and Zoopla, we've got big plans. So trying to actually get everyone from internal the business to come over and support us was going to be tricky. So actually having that external support in the beginning was really crucial in terms of, and I'll get onto this slightly later, in terms of how we go about building the panel, advice, everything else. And Question Pro were absolutely brilliant with that external support. I can only thank Asim, Oku, and Daniel as well, who were just really amazing in terms of helping us get off the ground. And it took a while, but we finally got there. So that's the structure. That's what's going to be housing our, uh, our panel, that's the software. The roof is now about those processes and those things that actually gets the panel going. The recruitment, the onboarding, and the messaging. With the recruitment, which was the thing we were struggling in, to do in the first place, we spent a lot of time establishing what we needed to do and what resources we had internally. So before we actually asked the question of, okay, do we go to an external support to help us do the recruitment for us to put them into the panel? Is there a process that we can improve internally to do that? And we found there was actually like four to five things that we could be doing better. One of them being utilizing the software we do already have better. So I mentioned Pendo, which is used for a variety of things, but in a research sense, we use it for on-site on pop-up messaging. And we'd started to use it a little bit, but we realized that we were undervaluing this tool massively. So we could target specific sites. If we had some data, we could target specific users as well. Not that it was always accurate. But that element of actually targeting specific parts of the site meant we could really dive in and find those users who were missing. So using that for the initial sort of onboarding phase was going to be super helpful, as well as just that recruitment. Um, outside of just our on-site tools, email. We hadn't even considered using email to recruit in the past either. We found there was a too big of a divide between ourselves and marketing the CRM teams. We needed to close that gap, find out what they're... We good? <laughs> find out what their processes were, build upon how we could in, in, integrate our processes with theirs to make sure that the messaging was getting out. So now there's actually a monthly newsletter that goes out to Alto, and as part of that, we have a small little bit of space that says, hey, there's an opportunity to join a panel. And that's great for just that, that continuous recruitment post-launch. Another thing that we're really working on, which is a little bit work in progress, is that actually we're building something on the site that clearly says, hey, we have a research panel. It does this, come and join, and some vouchers, help us out, learn a bit more, which is an amazing opportunity. So those were the few things that we're going to go about in terms of the recruiting, and the onboarding was then next. Once we figured out, okay, we, we know how we're going to reach our audience, let's think about the onboarding. We wanted this to be as seamless, as professional as, as possible. We didn't want this to be a hassle for our agents. So we found that actually just having a, a very small qualifying survey was going to be the easiest way to get them from A to B. And as part of that, it would solve one of our problems of having the right profile information on our, on our estate agents. Because as joining, there'll be a few questions to be like, what's your job title? What's your responsibility? And with estate agents, especially in some of the small organizations, they don't, might not have just one job title. And that's what we were starting to learn. They, did, they had wore multiple hats, did multiple jobs. So actually covering that, capturing that, okay, what are your job titles, has helped unlock so much, as, especially on the responsibility side of it as well. So having that really clean onboarding experience was crucial. And then the messaging side of it, we are super fortunate at Zoopla that we have an amazing sort of content and CRM, CRM team in, in, internal, internally. And as part of that, they have a variety of different ways of using tone of voice, and branding, and everything else. So we had that sorted. That was one of the few things we had that sorted straight out of the box. So we've got the structure in our software provider, Question Pro. And now we've got the roof in terms of how we can go about planning, getting people from A to B sorted. What's the next step? Finishing the exterior and the interior of the house. So we've, <laughs> we've got that foundations in place. We've got the structure, and let's make it look pretty. And in terms of the panel, that's all about how we make the, uh, the dashboard look and feel. And this is where the external support from Question Pro came in extremely handy. They were able to take our branding, our tone of voice, and create a platform which felt really recognizable for our estate agents. It was similar to what other tools we have, uh, other sites we have externally, 
So that way it didn't feel like it was a different experience. And as part of this phase, we started to implement some of that customer closeness. So actually we had community goals that estate agents can now see. These goals are having your voice heard, being a home for estate agents, and driving meaningful conversations. We felt that actually having these community goals, which were really easy to be seen on the dashboard, would help further and cement that relationship that we were actually taking this seriously. This is not a case of, we're just trying to get as much information from you. We actually do want this to be a place where you can have honest conversations with us, honest conversations with other estate agents in the forums, take part in surveys that drive meaningful conversation, not just about how outside the product is doing, but what the industry is in doing in general, which as we all know, the, industry, the housing industry is crazy, to put it lightly at the moment. So actually hearing their opinions and what's going on was really crucial. So what about that inter interior point of view? This is all about the processes and the workflows we need to put in place behind the scenes. So inter interior, behind the scenes. I really like the analogy. I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, um, this, it, uh, as we were building this panel, myself and the research team were starting to uh, um, get used to the business, start to implement our own guidelines and templates and workflows. So we were starting to really understand how we could best do research. And with adding the panel, we just needed to adapt them slightly to make sure that we'd included any sort of scenario that came across it. So if someone wanted, oh, we're a huge champion of research democratization as, uh, as well. So we really encourage our designers or whoever to do their own research. So as part of that, we need to make sure that they were educated with, when they're using the panel, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. Just having guidelines in place, just, yeah, that was the interior side of it. Making sure that people knew how to go about using the panel and the best way to do it. Exterior, it's all about how the dashboard feels and how that panel experience looks like. And the interior is making sure that it's smooth behind the scenes. On to our final phase. Hey, we're decorating and we're moving in now. The house is built, everything else is ready, so it's time to begin that recruitment and launch that panel, which uh, it's everything, takes everything into account, making sure you've got the guidelines in place, you've got your recruitment and your onboarding ready, you've got the messaging right, the dashboard looks ready, everyone knows who's accountable for what, that final bit is ready, to, so you're ready to recruit and launch. The other aspect of that, so this, that could be the moving in phase, I suppose, and this is the decorating fit. Just before you launch, you have that research and engagement opportunities ready straight away. We, uh, well, we, I, try to make sure that we have three pieces of content for our state agents to engage with weekly. So that could be a, a little quick poll or a long, longer, longer form survey, and then forums, which usually is a little bit of industry news, trying to get their opinion on it, or it could be an update from Alto, or an update from one of our industry experts as well. And this is something we're trying to work on a bit more in the future, because we're starting to see some really good engagement. Not only are they, just, are they just replying to their opinions, they're actually talking to other people in these comments as well. And that's the information that's really sort of unlocking a few things for us. So we had obviously our day one research plan, but we had a whole month's worth of research ready to go and just ready to adapt as well to see what worked, what didn't work. And now we do it on a weekly basis, trying to capture and just try and stay up to date with what's going on. And finally, once you've done all of this and you've launched it internally, start to, st start to begin sharing those updates, wins and insights. So we've gone about sort of advertising the house, advertising the panel with the recruitment and the launch. We now need to do this internally and make sure we get buy-in. Because there's nothing, I mean, impact is such a massive word at the moment with research. So making sure we're constantly sharing updates, even if the research we're doing is not necessarily tied to a KPI, or if it is, making sure we're, we're giving the opportunities for people to know what's going on. Just be really, really vocal and have a plan with that. So. We've gone about building our house, building our panel in terms of four phases. And again, this is super high level. Loads of other things went into it. But what's the story so far for Zoopla? So we've, been ha we've had the panel live now for about six to seven months, and we've kept up with that regular content and research activities. And we're starting to drive that behavior in estate agents to come back regularly. They, realize, they get that on Monday mornings, we usually send out our research. They get that notification on their emails. And they've started to realize, hey, I can log in for five minutes sometime this week, take part in some research, earn some credits, and then with that, I can re redeem for some, uh, some vouchers. And we're starting to really see that, and each week now, we're seeing a little bit more engagement, which is really great. Improved data richness and diversity in terms of who we're speaking to. So as I mentioned, big problem we were having is if we were successful with doing recruitment, we weren't talking to the right people, 
And now we are, and more so, we've been able to go so niche with some of the research projects we've done. It's been amazing. Speed. And I mean, beforehand, we were struggling to do research recruitments in two to three weeks, and now we regularly can promise to deliver the participants in under a week, which is insane for B2B recruitment. And this, is, this part for the surveying capabilities is actually a massive, massive benefits question pro. This is something that we didn't uh, foresee happening when we started the relationship, is that the surveying side of it has really upped our quant side of the business in terms of our research. We're really quite qual heavy in our research team, and we haven't really had the excuse to do quant in the past, or even the tools. But now with the surveying side of Question Pro, we can go out quite regularly to find that quant to just back up some of our qual insights. And it, with that and all the other things I've mentioned today, it's massively increased not only the quality and the impact of our insights. People are so regularly coming and talking to us about the insights we've found. Our B2B researcher, bless her, is just run off her feet. She's got so many requests. She's, in, she's doing roadshows of all of her insights all over the place. And yeah, this panel it is and continuing to just surprise us with the amount of impact it is having internally. Um, yeah, and that's me building a house and building a panel. So thank you very much. <laughs> Morally and ethically, I'm not a big fan, but it really, it works with our estate agents. And we've purposely set, um, so we set a number of credits you can be, you can get per task. And in the beginning, we purposely sort of kept them uh, a low threshold in terms of getting quite a lot of credits just to build that behavior. And we're actually finding that we've hit a bit of a sweet spot now with what we can incentivize. And um, yeah, so for, about, for a survey, we'll probably do about 50 credits, and it only takes about 100 credits to get 10 pounds. So it's really easy. Just after a couple of weeks, you can get just a 10 pound voucher, and it's something that is five minutes a week that they come in and participate. So again, just building that behavior off, it's really easy to earn a couple of quid here on the side. Following on that, I mean, do you, do you feel like the Amazon voucher is kind of a driving force, or is it a lot just? hey, we want to give feedback, we kind of like the product. How much are you seeing on, on either side of that equation? I think we're seeing about 50-50. Okay. Like I mentioned beforehand that we had that initial problem of having those really reliable customer lists of like maybe like 20 people who are really keen. So we might have those 20 people who are just really keen, but that's now backed up with the other 20 people who maybe are here just for the voucher, but they're willing to give their opinion on something. And that's 15,000 users, so not accounts. Um, so I, I wouldn't know from the top of my head the number of um, estate agent accounts we have, but that's 15,000 users. Uh, and that question on churn goes way above my uh, pay grade to understand that. But um, obviously, this the research that we help do and, 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 commit and do helps them feed back into what's going on behind the scenes. So why might they be churning? Is it usability problems with the site? And alongside um, doing NPS, NPS data, but doing actual research with our design team to find out, okay, what's the, most, what's the least user-friendly side of it and what can we improve is really helping. So that, yeah, having this unique panel of customers telling us this is not great, it's, it's really easy then to sell to our product managers and above to say, hey, we've got people right here saying this is not great. So we, in terms of helping with the churn, we can only provide what the Irish state agents are, are saying. Yeah, I, in terms of actually stopping that, that goes way above my head. <laughs> Yeah, so as part of, um, as part of like, this onboarding survey, we've got like two questions that are job title and responsibility. And we just plaster as many options as possible into it because we realize there are some one-man shows who they are the general manager, but they also might be the sales negotiator, the lessons negotiator. And as part of that, then in, in terms of the, and the software, then we can go on behind the scenes and we were like, Someone might come to me, hey, I, want, I just want to talk to lessons negotiations that have lessons negotiators who have two to three branches. 
I can go in and sift through the data really seamlessly, create that group, and then I can save that group for later on if I want to as well, and then just send out that survey to that group. And it's, it's completely up to you how many um, things you want to, uh, demographics or demographic information you want to go and use, utilize. <laughs> I don't know who was first. So we'll, we'll do both. We've got time. <laughs> Two questions. One on day one of recruitment. How many times did you hit refresh, seeing how many new people? <laughs> Oh, I for the like for the first day for maybe like a good hour I was like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> and then my second real question is, how long did it take to get the kind of recruitment level up to a point where you would say, okay, well this has now given us a good number of people where we can kind of go out and actually kind of do some research. To yeah, sure. So like, obviously we've got that fifteen thousand number of users in in our head, but we were we were trying to be as realistic as possible with our ambitions. So after six months, we were hoping for maybe about. 100 signups, and of that, half being um, sort of regularly engaging. And after that six month period, we'd reached about 180, and we've got over 100 people who regularly take part in research. In terms of those surveys, if we were to send a survey to that audience, uh, a good 50 to yeah, 40, 50 people replied to that, which we find is quite encouraging. Um, from going from talking to two to three people to just anything above like 10 or anything like that, we're finding it's a huge win. So we're starting to set our, our uh, goals a little bit higher for next year in terms of how we're up in that now. But uh, yeah, we're just happy to be talking to more people. <laughs> Yeah, actually, when it comes to that three pieces of content a week, I regularly will go to um, Jack PT. I always forget the order of it. Jack. <laughs> Thank you, audience. Um, I regularly go to that tool to then regularly just, if I've got a piece of industry knowledge that I'm like, oh, this is okay, this is a really good talking point. I haven't got the time to maybe put this into a survey format or to put it or word it in a way that can encourage conversation. That's how I use AI. It's just like, I, very politely, I was I had pleased at the end of, the, of my sentences. Can you please uh, put this into a format that will encourage conversation as part of a forum for a B two B panel? And I'll add a little bit more detail about their estate agents. This is the reason, and it just helps reword things for me. And so that's how I regularly use it. For the, some of the reasons that um, that was mentioned previously, I really try not to encourage anyone to put personal data or anything that we've got internally into it, which I've had to tell a few people off at work for it, because it's like, you don't know who's looking at that. Please, please don't upload it. But um, yeah, that's how I regularly use it.